In this video, I'm going to break down and cover everything that you need to do to be able to legally fly a drone in the United States in 2023. Let's get into it. The great news about flying a drone recreationally is you can get set up to fly it legally in about an hour or less. First off, let's cover if you need to register your drone or not. So if you have a drone that weighs over 250 milligrams, which is also equal to a half of a pound, you need to register it, which is a $5 sticker. And all you need to do is put a sticker on the outside of your drone. Do not put it inside the battery compartment that is no longer allowed. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way and I registered my drone not through the official FAA website, which means I got overcharged for something that should have costed $5, but I paid $50 for. If you guys just Google register drone, which is what I did, the first website that will come up is sponsored and it looks like this. It looks pretty legit, it fooled me, and you'll be paying $50 to register your drone on this website. Do not do that. The real website you need is www.faa.gov. Make sure you are on the official FAA website. The link will be down in the description, but once you are here, all you need to do is get the serial number either from the box that your drone came with or you can find your serial number most likely inside the battery compartment near a barcode. If your drone weighs less than 250 grams, you can skip this part. Once you are all set up and registered through the FAA website, you should get an email with your registration number. If you absolutely need or want to fly your drone that same day, you will have to print out your registration number either through a label printer or something like that but you don't have to wait for shipping for your label to come to be able to fly your drone. As long as your registration number is on your drone, you are good to go. Now that we're all registered with our drone, the next thing we'll need to do, no matter if your drone weighs less or more than 250 milligrams, as of 2023, everybody who flies a drone needs to take a trust test, which is a combination of four simple quizzes that is practically impossible to fail. It's more of a training than a test. Just like doing your registration, you can take your trust test on multiple different websites, but if you want to ensure you're using the right one and you're not getting scammed, use the FAA website, or you can use the Pilot Institute website, which is the website I used and worked fantastic and has tons of great information for drone flyers. Taking this test is 100% free and your account will be deleted as soon as your certificate is issued. So you must download it or else you will not have access to your certificate. Download and print it if possible. Within a few short days, you should receive your certificate for passing the drone test. Carry that with you at all times while flying, as well as your registration card. So once you have those two things done, you are all set up to go fly your drone, but only if you are using it for recreational use. Now let's get into the commercial side of drone flying. You'll need to take one more test or exam, which is called the Part 107 certification. If you don't have your Part 107 certificate and someone offers you money for a job, even if you want to do it for free, that is not allowed. That is illegal and you can either be fined or put in jail for it. To be eligible to get your Part 107, you must be at least 16 years old, be able to read, write, speak, and understand English, and be in physical and mental condition to safely fly your UAS. I personally have not taken the Part 107 test, but there is an 88-page study sheet on the FAA website, so needless to say, it is a lot more rigorous than the trust test that I mentioned before. It will cost you between $150 to $250. Again, I highly recommend this Pilot Institute website. It says right here that you're guaranteed to pass the test or you'll get $175 plus a full refund. 99.8% of their students pass the test. If you guys would like, I can make a more in-depth video about the Part 107 test, but for now, we'll just leave it at that. So now that we've covered everything as far as documentation, like the registration, the trust test, and the Part 107 test, we'll go over the general rules for recreational flyers. Here's the nine rules for recreational flyers. Number one being fly only for recreational purposes. If you're anything like me and you can see yourself one day making money from using your drone while you have your recreational certificate, just enjoy it. In the meantime, you can look at this 88 page study sheet that they have on the FAA website, study it up and once you pass the test, you're good to go start flying commercially and making some money. Okay, rule number two is follow the safety guidelines of a FAA recognized community based organization also known as CBO. 
The link will be in the description if you want to check out the community-based organization rules. Rule number three is to always have visual line of sight on your drone or have a visual observer with you. The most common use for a visual observer is when flying FPV drones, the first person view drones with the goggles on. Rule number four is to never interfere with other aircrafts. When it comes to recreational drone flying, our priority is at the very bottom of the totem pole. Rule number five is to fly at or below FAA authorized altitudes in controlled airspace only with prior FAA authorization by using Lance or Drone Zone. There's two types of airspaces, controlled and uncontrolled. Uncontrolled, you are free to fly. Controlled, you need approval from FAA. There is an app called Before You Fly made by the FAA that provides situational awareness to recreational flyers and other drone users. It does not allow users to obtain airspace authorizations to fly in controlled airspace though. I highly recommend before you go fly your drone, you plan your flight on this app. Rule number six is that you fly your drone either at or below 400 feet in an uncontrolled airspace. Flying your drones in a restricted airspace is not allowed at all. Rule number seven is to take the trust test, which we already discussed. Rule number eight is to always mark your drone with your registration number and carry your registration with you while flying. Now the last rule, number nine, is more of a common sense thing. Do not operate your drone in a manner that endangers the safety of national airspace system. The last thing that I would like to mention is remote ID. The FAA has established remote ID requirements. The remote ID broadcasts your drone's position and telemetry. It is a necessary step to facilitate more complicated drone operations. If drone deliveries become more popular, the skies are going to get a lot more crowded. If you own a DJI, most of their line is equipped with remote ID already installed in the drone. Again you guys, I just want to mention, if you're unsure whether you're allowed to fly your drone in a certain area, make sure you have the Before You Fly app and plan your flights. You can get in some serious trouble if you are using or flying your drone in ways that you are not supposed to be. I was a little bit intimidated when I was looking to buy a drone for the first time. But like I said, don't let all this stuff intimidate you if you really want to do this. It's very simple and easy to do. Most importantly, welcome to the community. Just go out, have fun with your drone. And if this video helped you guys learn some valuable information, feel free to like and subscribe. Comment down below whether you want me to cover any other tech or drone related products or topics. Have a great day guys. Peace out.